That being said, we want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. Hope everybody is in, in good health and in good spirits. And, and we're so happy to see you tonight and tomorrow morning. We'll both be on Zoom. And, uh, and then next week, as we've said, we'll reconvene in, in person, always with the Zoom option as well. But take a second, turn to, uh, turn to all the squares around you, blow a kiss, give a wave, say Shabbat Shalom. Uh, just, just do whatever makes sense to welcome one another. I remember when Zoom was new for everybody, people were giving high fives to the squares next to them. I thought that was kind of fun too. So, so all, all you know, kind of some, some right, some, uh, some safe ways to, to, to pass some Shabbat Shalom love as well. So, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. We're going to start this evening as we do each Shabbat with song, with the singing of Hine Matov, and we hope that while you're muted, that still we'll be able to see your shining faces and and your hear feel your voices singing along with Leah as we turn to the singing of. Uh, Please don't forget also that if you want to be in speaker mode, you can see just one of us at a time or gallery mode if you want to see everybody. And, uh, and we look forward to, to singing and praying with you. Just one moment. begin with a prayer of gratitude for all that is holy in my life. God needs no words, no English or Hebrew, no semantics and no services, but I need them. And through prayer, I can sense my inner strength, my inner purpose, my inner joy, my capacity to love. As I reach upward in prayer, I sense these qualities in my creator to love God is to love each other, to work to make our lives better, to love God is to love the world God created and to work to perfect it. To love God is to love dreams of peace and joy that illumine all of us and to bring that vision to life. Join us please as we kindle our Shabbat lights. We hope that you will, will join us as we share these words together. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we by our lives give light to all who behold us. 
as their brightness reminds us of generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. And if you want to take a moment and kindle your own Shabbat lights at your tables, take a moment and then share the bracha together. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech, Ha'olam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu, Please join us as we continue with Kiddush. We'll invite you please in body or in spirit or even in your posture from a sitting position to sit up perhaps a little more erectly as we turn to Kiddush, sanctifying this day and this time. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore Peri HaGafel Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvota V'ratza Vanu V'shabat Kodsho V'ava U'v'ratzon Himchilanu Zikaron Levase V'reshi Continue together with the singing of Maya Fehayom, how beautiful this day is, and Shabbat Shalom. So please join us. Continue together, we offer thanks, O oh God, for the Shabbat, which unites us in faith and hope, for Shabbat holiness, which inspires sacred living, for Shabbat memories glowing even in darkness, for Shabbat peace born of friendship and love, we offer thanks and blessing, O oh God. Come, let us sing joyously to Adonai, raise a shout for our rock and deliverer, let us come into God's presence with praise, let us raise a shout for God in song, for Adonai is a great God, the great ruler of all divine beings. We'll continue now with welcoming Shabbat in, in an unusual way, right? Because we are at home in our own homes, but, but what a wonderful opportunity we have to, whether you are customarily at home and, and singing this song or in our sanctuary, or perhaps somewhere else altogether to, to actually take a moment and imagine what it would feel like and what it does feel like to choose to bring an essence of Shabbat, to, to increase, your delight and your joy to, to really separate out this moment from the rest of the week and to welcome Shabbat. We sing verses one, two, five, and nine. And at verse nine, we'll invite you please to rise and to greet the Sabbath bride. <laughs> ¶¶ 
Please be seated. Entrances to holiness are everywhere. The possibility of ascent is all the time. Even at unlikely times and through unlikely places, there is no place on earth without the presence. Join us, please, as we rise for our call to worship the Bar Hoon. Lie, 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 lie,
Together, praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars, creator of the tide of time and light. You guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ma'ariv Aravim. In love, you offered your people Israel your Torah and mitzvot. Praise to you, Adonai, who loves your people Israel. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai. Please be seated as we continue with the Be'ahavta. Be'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol levavcha uvechol nafshecha Uvechol meodecha Vehayu advarim ha'ele Asher anuchi mitzavcha Hayom al Vishinantam Livanecha, Vidibarta Baam, Vishiv Teha Beve Teha, Uvlech Teha Vaderech, Uvshoch Beha Uvkumecha, Ukshartam Leod Aliadecha, Vera Yuletota Fod Bain Emecha, Uchtavtam. Al mizuzot betecha uvisharecha Leman tizkeru vasitem et kol mitzvotai Beitem kidoshim lelohechem Ani Adonai lohechem Asher hotzeiti etchem Meretz mitzrayim Liot lachem lelohim Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands, marching together.
pray that we may lie down in peace as we say, Baruch atah Adonai HaPares Sukkot Shalom Aleinu Ve'alkul Amo Yisrael Ve'al Yerushalayim Blessed One, you spread over us a canopy of peace, a shelter of shalom over all Israel, over all your people we pray, and over Jerusalem. We'll continue now as we celebrate the joy of Shabbat and this time being together and, and lifting our voices and our spirits in song as we continue with the singing of Vashamru. We turn to the tefillah. Uh, you, you perhaps know these words from our the bottom of our prayer book on the opposite page to where the tefillah starts, but they're, they're written by Regina Donis, who was accredited with being one of the very first, not one of, the very first woman rabbi. More to come on her another time, but she is so worth our studying. And she wrote these words, God has placed abilities and challenges in our heart without regard to gender, and each of us has the duty, whether man or woman, to realize those, those gifts that God has given. And this is our time, and this is our moment. And perhaps we might even say this is the season, just having come through the festival of lights, and, and as we were saying earlier on, in, in these days which feel darker, but actually we are charged that much the more so to, to think about our, our moments of brightness and lightness and thanks to to imagine those moments to narrow in on those moments to think of our connections to our ancestors as the avot speaks and to spend time and energy remembering those moments of grace and gratitude as we turn to the words of the tefillah so we'll ask you please in body or in spirit to join us as we rise Adonai sefatai tiftach ufia gitehilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu velohe avotinu vimoteinu. Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor ve'hanura, el elyon, domel chasadim tovim ve'kone ha'akor, 
וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות, ומביא גאולה לבני בניהם למען שמו באהבה. מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן, ברוך אתה אדוני, מגן אברהם בעזרת שרה. אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני, מחיי הכל אתה רב להושיע. משיב הרוח ומוריד הגשם, מכלכל חיים בחסד, מחיי הכל ברחמים רבים, סומך נופלים ורופא חולים, ומתיר אסורים. ומקיים אמונתו עודי שנעפר. מי חמוך בעל גבורות ומי דום אלך, מלך ממית ומחיה ומצמיח ישוע, ונאמן אתה לחיות הכל, ברוך אתה אדוני מחיי הכל. אתה קדוש ושמך קדוש וקדושים בכל יום מהללוך הסלע ברוך אתה אדוני האל הקדוש. Please be seated. We continue together as we say ברוך אתה אדוני מקדש השבת. Praise to you אדוני who sanctifies שבת. ברוך אתה אדוני המחזיר שכינתו לציון. Blessed are you whose divine presence is felt again in Zion. ברוך אתה אדוני, הטוב שמך ולך נא אין להודות. Blessed are you אדוני, whose goodness deserves thanks and praise. ברוך אתה אדוני המברך את עמו ישראל בשלום. And we pause for a few moments of prayer, of meditation, of silence.
turn our prayers now we sing about peace we sing about bringing peace Leah leads us in the idea I love the, the way that particular oh say shalom um, escalates right it seems to start slow and, and build and, and I, I have to imagine and wonder and hope and pray that that's how peace also grows in steps and, uh, and there are many in, in our community, and there are many, many, so many now, too many who are touched by illness and who are in need of prayers. We, we were saying just as we were signing on, right, that, that each of us knows uh, already a handful of people who are, 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 are positive for COVID and, and any number of illnesses right now that, that seem to be circulating, but the, the numbers do seem to be also climbing. So let us also escalate our prayers and let us find deeper, deeper levels within our own prayer life and our yearning for wholeness and health and strength and well-being. As, as we say, Mishaberach, Avotena Vimotena, Abraham Yitzchak Yaakov, Sarah Rivka, Rachel, Valeyahu Yivarech, Etcholim. May the one who blessed, excuse me, our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and give strength to those who are struggling. In particular, we're holding in our pray prayers, Shana Esther but Ruffle, Sarah but Abraham but Sarah, Alan Skirker, Laura Braun, Stephen Brent, Rini Feingold, Irving Manis, Susan Silton Tobias, Kim Stanger Delisle, Gabriel Berger, Brian Mansfield, Michael Shartok, Pat Connor, Rick Silterra, Miriam Nemitz, Casey Zachman, Ali Goldsmith, Barbara Petro, Valerie Brownstein, Abigail Shimkanen, Liz Steinberg, Stephen Breiger, Claire Cowing, Linda Champion, and Jackie Goldshine. And if there are others whom you would add to this list of names that are better spoken aloud by you, please unmute yourself, share that name aloud with us so we can hold them in our prayers as well. Mary Moss, Stacy French, Paulette Davis. Sarah Pastanek, Stan Escoda. Gary Lipton, Allison Rora Sakali. Eric Trimboli, Christ, uh, Christian Miller, and Kathy Miller. Irene Hazella, Patty Newman, Richard Jaffe. Marie 
Aaron and Ryan. And let's add to our prayers, those who are tending to those who are, who are ill right now, those who are ministering to those, whether medically or emotionally or spiritually, let's, let's add them to our prayers. That they have the strength that they best need to do what, what each, of, each of our loved ones need. And, and along with all those who, who perhaps don't have a name that is known to us, but who are in our prayers just the same. As we say, may the blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for wherever possible their health to be restored and their strength to be revived. May God send renewal of body and renewal of spirit as we join together in saying, Amen. Amen. say amen. Amen. I want to share with you just a, a short set of stories and then actually I'm hoping that we'll be able to have a, a bit of a conversation. We are a small enough group tonight that I hope you will, you will join me and we can have a bit of a conversation. But uh, I want to share with you uh, this, this two short stories. One where my friend Margie and I went to Eilat Chaim the Center for Jewish Spirituality for a week-long retreat uh, sometime while I was early on in rabbinical school, and I had never really experienced retreat-based Judaism beyond youth group and, and didn't quite know what to expect. So given our respective schedules, we had in fact arrived in the evening several hours after the initial orientation for this retreat, and in the darkness, we were taken to our simple and rustic rooms, unpacked our bags, and we promptly fell asleep. We awoke early the next morning, eager to start the day, dressed and went down to the dining hall. We moved along the cafeteria light line to collect our breakfast, arriving at the end of the line. We waited our turn to collect our silverware, and it was really at that moment that Margie, who had a very low, deep, Lauren Bacall-like voice with a volume that was at complete odds with her less than five foot actor said, booming, hey, someone's toast is burning, as she noticed smoke billowing from one of the toasters. And instantly, 50 sets of eyes turned to her and to us in shock, not for the toast that was burning, but because in missing that orientation the night prior, so too had we missed the directive that breakfasts at this retreat were entirely silent. Short story number two comes from Rabbi Elliot Kukla, who shares the following. He writes, I was raised in a culturally Jewish family that practiced Buddhism. And when I was a small child, we lived in Hawaii. And my family was involved with a Tibetan Buddhist temple housed in a beautiful wooden building painted orange, red, gold, and green. 
It was located in the midst of a lush rainforest ringed by a rolling lawn that had been carved out of the trees. And inside the temple, there was a dimly lit, barefooted and hushed atmosphere. An altar was filled with photographs of Tibetan, Tibetan monks, bowls of fragrant fruit offerings, and curling tendrils of incense. In the middle of the green lawn, he writes, hung a large brass gong that was periodically rung to signal the beginning of feasts and celebrations. When I was five years old, I developed a bad habit, he writes. While the adults were inside in silent meditation, I used to sneak into the middle of the lawn and ring the gong. And this happened often enough that the problem came to the attention of the Rin Ponche, the spiritual leader of the temple. He asked to speak to the small chubby gong ringer and I was summoned to his room for a private chat, he writes. I was terrified. My parents dropped me off at the doorway of his chamber and I entered trembling. I was braced to be humiliated by this religious authority figure. But when Rinpoche began speaking, he told me that gong ringing per se was not a bad thing. He told me that he could see that I had a lot of energy and a lot of anger that could be used to change the world. The key in growing up, he told me, would be to figure out the right moments to ring the gong and when I needed to respect the silence. Bukla continues, even after years of rabbinical school and advanced Jewish studies, this simple teaching remains one of the most influential religious lessons that I have ever received. As an adult, what I glean from this message is that there are times for each of us to sit in silent meditation. And then there are moments when we are called to make as much noise as possible in order to call attention to exactly who we are and how we want our world to be. And ringing a gong at the wrong moment, like I did, is a mistake. But so is failing to sound when one's situation calls for. Like perhaps when something is on fire. Although Kukla says he learned this lesson from a Buddhist teacher, Judaism has its own form of gong ringing. We find it in Shemot, the start of the book of Exodus, which is where we continue our Torah reading this week, completing the individual family narratives of Breshit of Exodus. The book of Exodus begins 400 years after the end of Genesis, recounting how the descendants of Jacob flourished and multiplied in Egypt, and where we hear the gong ring as we read the powerful story of our people's cry for liberation and change. And here that we find the framework for peoplehood, our peoplehood. Rabbi Kukla notes how the very first verses of the portion open the second book of the Bible with a terse, action-packed account of both the beginning of the Israelites' oppression as slaves in Egypt and the seeds of their liberation. And in just a few opening verses, the Israelites grow into a flourishing nation, threaten the oligarchy, and become enslaved. In a blink of an eye, in just a few short verses, or for us in 21 months, things we know can become radically different. And reading about our collective experience of exile and slavery, I cannot determine whether it's ironic or timely that as we again reluctantly grapple with whether to be together or to stay apart, our sacred text also reflects a profound tension between the individual and the collective. Certainly not just in this moment, the question of whether we feel compelled or resigned to sit in silence, arriving at our own conclusions or to be the one to ring or hearken to the sound of the gong ringing. This is timeless. Moses, undeniably our most influential leader, making his appearance at the beginning of the book of Exodus, offers us tremendous insights, not just about leadership, but about character, when to stay silent and when to bang that gong. Rabbi Yitz Greenberg cites Exodus 2, preparing Moses for leadership, when he witnesses an Egyptian taskmaster beating an Israelite and he intervenes on the latter's behalf. This is in Exodus chapter two. Not content to defend his fellow Israelites, however, he next tries to adjudicate between them. 
observing injustice on the one hand and injurious conflict on the other, Moses is not just disturbed or disappointed, he acts to remedy the situation. How many of us encounter situations or of injustice and pretend not to notice, or maybe just as bad, register the injustice, but find a million, a million excuses not in fact to act? How often do we turn a blind eye to strife that we could ameliorate or even heal, fearing that the burden of getting involved would be just too great to bear? So I wanna ask you, and I hope that you will unmute and, and let us know for you, what determines when you choose to be an upstander or when you choose to be a bystander? I'm wondering if you will share with us how you make that determination when to see a wrongdoing or, or a problem and let it be versus those moments where you think you need to intercede. Just unmute and let us know. Arlene, go ahead. It's a very good question. Um, I think it's important to stand up for what you believe in. And yet, maybe something that you believe in, if you bring out that side of you, it may hurt others. So you have to weigh that. So the question is, do you satisfy yourself if it's going to hurt others? And then you decide whether you want to speak or not. That's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Not, not, not black or white, right? Not black never. or white. Yeah. No, never. No. Unfortunately, yeah, I guess. Yeah, Maybe thank you. Gives us choice. Yeah, Ron, Ron. Um, I, I think sometimes we see something but we're only seeing a snapshot. We're not seeing the entire movie. So we don't truly understand what's going on. So that I think before we make the decision whether to ring the bell or stay silent, we really need to understand what's really going on. So then we can intercede at the right time and do the right thing. Because sometimes all we again are seeing is, is a little snapshot. We might rush to too quick of a judgment. Um, and I also think that each of us has different skills and attributes that are, in a way, are gifts from somewhere like God, and that we're called upon to use those to fix and remedy those situations. And it's a deep Jewish value and principle. So I think we're all called on to do that. Yes, thank you. Yes. Marlene. I think for me, um, sometimes it's uh, weighing it. I think we get overwhelmed with feeling that we can't make a difference. And um, for me, it's important to keep remembering that one thing can make a difference. Right, and, and, and right, the, the teaching that you have heard time and again, right? Um, it, right, it is not our job to complete the task, but neither are we free to desist from it. Right, we don't have to. We don't have to tackle the whole thing, right? But but we have to at least be working on it, right, in in, in some way, shape, or form. So let me ask the next question, which falls in line, right? Which which would naturally fall in line, which is when is it right to respect the silence? Are there times? when we ought not to speak. Okay, this isn't one of them. I didn't mean that literally. Right. Are, are, are there, right, are there, are there times, right, when it is better for us to, to hold back, right, and to not, right, there is actually a midah in, in um, in Mozart teaching, 
which says that we ought not to occupy too much space, right? That we, we ought to, you know, in the same way that God um, retracted and, and, and uh, kind of withdrew God's self at the creation of the world so that there was enough room for the rest. Is there, is there a fitting time or a fitting cause or a fitting moment in some way that we ought to step back and, and not respond, not, uh, not act, but, but respect the silence? figuratively you know maybe it goes back to what arlene was saying if someone else is going to be hurt by it then that's probably a good reason not to yeah. it's just so you know like right now you know in the last few years there are just so many things out there it's it's overwhelming and it's really hard to know, you know, what to devote your limited time and energy to. What's safe, what's prudent, what's necessary, right? Where to make space for somebody else, right? To come forward and right. to be alongside as an ally, right? Right, is, is another piece of the equation, right? So we're, we're taught that what sets Moses apart is actually not that he, he um, it, it's not that he doesn't merely recognize oppression, but he acts unflinchingly, right, to bring it to an end, that he, that he's, you know, he's forthright and he comes, you know, forward right away to do something. And that's one model. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tribute to his character, right? But I'm going back to, to the Tibetan leader who said to this, 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 you know, boy of five years old, um, that he could see that he had a lot of energy, right, to address things. And that he had a lot of anger, right? And we know that that those things are necessary and that the key in development is to figure out the right moments to ring the gong and and when to respect the silence and i thought what a what a beautiful and powerful lesson for us in these times where we're not so sure how much how much energy and and how much time and how much space we should be occupying right how much how much each of that is is ours to to use and and a good lesson for us when we look at the beginning of, of shemot and and some of our characters coming forward for us to 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 find our right place and I imagine at different times there are different places for us and different moments for us to step forward and, and others for us to step to the side so thank you thank you thank you thank you and and let us continue as we turn to the Elenu uh, I'm hoping I will get back to the right slide and we will whoop, know that we will get back to the Elenu we'll ask you please in just a moment once I find it sorry for the nauseating scrolling Cantabron is way better at this than I am uh, we will continue with the Elenu and, uh, and ask you please embody your own spirit to rise. Elenu l'shabeach l'adon hakol L'atet gidula l'yotzev reshit Sh'lo asanu k'goye ha'atzot V'lo samanu k'mishpechot ha'adama Shelo sam chelke nu kahem, ve gora le nu kechol hamona, ve anach nu korim, u mishtachavim u modim, lifne melech, malche hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu, ve nema, ve haya adonai, למלך על כל הארץ, ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא, יהיה אדוני אחד, ושמו, ושמו, ושמו Let us turn our thoughts to our loved ones whom death has taken from us in recent days and those who died at this season in years past. Our hearts open as well to the wider circles of loss in our community and wherever grief touches the human family. This evening, during the period of Shloshim, we are remembering Jack Feldman, grandfather of Brian Feldman, Myrna Silver, stepmother of Seth Silver, Robert W. Pierce, brother of Marty Lawler, and Olga Puzo, wife of Alexander Potopenko, along with Bernard Rosenthal. Tonight marks a yard site, an anniversary passing for Jack Bell, Enid Bondi, Morris uh, Boyum, Sidney Chernak, William Denethorn, Sarah Etlinger, Henry Flamholtz, Jacob Friedland, Anna Geiger, Vivian Green, Nicholas Greenfield, 
Belvedere de Korowitz, uh, Leonard Kaplan, Harold Katzel, Sidney Krauss, Mikhail Lender, Arthur Lewis, Abraham Medoff, Lillian Myers, Lonnie Perlman, George Roth, Jeanette Schneider, Avram Shemaskin, Jack Shulman, Janet Simpkins, Sylvia Snyder, Harold Solomon, Dwayne Statz, Burton Stern, and Rosalie Yaknin. If there are others that you would add to either list, please would you share that name aloud with us? Cantor Elliot Dicker. May their memories be for a blessing as we join together in the words of the mourners' Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Vit Kadash, Me Raba, Be Al Madi, Vrahir, Tevi, and Lich Mafute, Bahaye Hon of Yome Hon, Vrahe de Hobet Israel, Bagala, Visman Kari, Bimru, Amen. Yehesh Me Raba, Me Barach, Le Lamu, Nail Maya, Vit Barach, Vish to Bach, Vit Parvi, Traman Vit Nase, Vit a Darvi, Talevi, Talal, Shme de Kudisha, Brihu. The Elamin Kul Birchata Vishirata, Tushbechata Venechamata, the Amiran Beoma Vimru, Amen. Behe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, the Chaim Alenuvel Kul Yisrael Vimru, Amen. Ose Shalom Bimrama, Huya Se Shalom, Alenuvel Kul Yisrael Vel Kul, Shvete Vel Vimru, Amen. May the source of peace bestow peace on all who mourn, and may we be a source of comfort to all who are bereaved as we join together in saying, Amen. Please be seated, please be seated. Just a few announcements. Please join us tomorrow morning on Zoom for both Torah study and for services. Uh, only on Zoom, our office uh, will be back open on Monday morning. No religious school this week at all. Please just mark your calendars for the next um, uh, perspectives on policing program for January 5th offered to us by the, the Social Action Committee. Past, present, and future with guest speaker Connor Wire Reynolds at 7 p.m. That's January 5th. Um, and, uh, and please look on our website for places that are in need of donations at this time as well uh, for both Kentucky tornado, tornado uh, disaster relief, Afghan refugees, and for the fight against anti Semitism. All that information can be found on our website. We want to thank Toby Olson for being our greeter this evening, and we want to thank, as always, Leah Sherman for, for joining us and leading us in song and in prayer. Always, always a joy and a pleasure, and, and to each of you for joining us as well. And we will continue with both Motsi and our closing song. And we hope that you will join us. We sometimes have a showbread, sometimes not, but if you do, Please join us in Motsi as we say together. Baruch atalunai Eloheinu melech haolam ha-motsi lechem yin ha-aretz. Amen. B'tayavon, everybody. And, uh, and, and please join us in our closing song. goes right along with not finishing the task, but doing it together bit by bit. Ani ve'ata. Please do join us.
And now we say Shabbat Shalom, a good week ahead. We wish you a good week, a peaceful week, a healthy week. And uh, we hope that you'll unmute yourselves and say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Shabbat Shalom.